So we've been talking about taxonomy or the way to hierarchically organize the animals in different categories. But there is a better way to do it and modern scientists actually try to avoid using taxonomy because of the problem that it creates. So we talked about in the last video that it's kind of hard to accept taxonomy when in one part of the tree of life the genus is very similar but in another part of the tree of life the genuses are very different from each other. In other words, the similarity between two members of the same class when you look at the classes of, of cats are going to be something but the similarity between members of the warm classes are completely different levels of similarity and so to put them in the same kind of similarity level it doesn't really make sense and then you have other lack of insight into the actual evolutionary history process and so we use instead trees of life and there's a name for that type of science it's called a phylogenetic tree or phylogeny or the process of creating these phylogenetic trees and so we're going to be talking more about that on this video the advantage of using these phylogenetic trees is that they have branching points like you see over here. Uh, the leopard and the domestic cat, although they are in different genuses, they do share the family name like we talked about before. They are within the same family and that's the family Felidae, which we call the feline family. And the that leopard is going to be in the Pantera branch of the tree while the domestic cat is going to be in the Felis branch of the tree and so that's how they are in a different genus. But they must share a common ancestor since they share the Felidae family and that's how putting it in a tree actually gives you some information about the relationship between them. And so again, the advantage of using phylogeny is that you can see the branching points of the evolutionary process and get information about how the evolutionary process actually take, took place. Here's another example. Lapper, domestic cat, and the wolf are all in the same order or the carnivora. And so that means that they must, again, share a common ancestor, even though clearly the wolf and the domestic cat and the leopard are not necessarily at the same level of similarity in terms of their family. Because is clearly the leopard and the domestic cat uh, are going to be sharing more similarity than the wolf are. What does that tell you? It tells you that the ancestor of the wolf to the domestic cat is further out than the ancestor of the wolf to the leopard. In other words, the domestic cat is closer to the leopard than to the wolf and you get the same kind of similarity relationship that you would get looking at taxonomy but in this case you actually look at by through the branches of the tree of life. And so again the branching points give you information about common ancestry. But all of them do share a common ancestor because they're all carnivores. Now notice that to, to create this branching point is to kind of like navigate a road and where each of the steps of the tree of life you have a choice do I go left or do I go right kind of like this if I want to decide um, where are things in my room for example, I can do a taxonomy key for it, and we call this process dichotomous key. Dichotomous because every step of the way you have a two-way split, you know, and you make a guide for this two-way split. So, for example, to find things in my room, follow the following rules: they are the things are either on my bed or they're going to be on my desk. So, for the things which are on my bed, go right, but the things on my desk, go left. If you went bed onto the right, there are things there on the bed that either belong in the bed or don't belong in the bed. For example, if you go to the things that don't belong in the bed, you will find an ashtray. But among the things that belong in the bed, you will find the things which are for my body or things which are for my head. For example, you have a blanket for the body and you have the pillow for the head. And so depending on whether what you answered on each branching point, you either go one way or the other and you reach the final organized classification thing. And so that is a way to follow the characteristics of life at branching points that make logistic evolutionary sense and classify them in order. If you went to the, th the things on my desk, for example, you, you split them in either electronics or non-electronics. The electronics are going to be a computer and the non-electronic will be a book. And see, that is a way that you can actually classify all the things in life. And we call this dichotomous keying or two-way splits that help you organize your journey through the tree of life. So let's create a quick little taxonomy key or a dichotomous key for the things we see in this room. Can you think of something? Maybe you just want to pause it, create your own, kind of experiment with before I actually make my own. Well, here's an example. So I'm going to make the first split things that are on the wall or things which are not touching the wall right so that's a two-way split so you see that thing that that way you already separated all the chairs which are not touching the wall from the rest of the group you know and so the, the ones that went that way will be chairs then you, you can do another group among the things that are touching the wall some of them are on the wall itself and some of them are not now you already separated all the furniture away from the wall and you are only left with the doors of the closet and the window so on that branch you say if this is some Something that opens vertically then it's the window if it's something that opens horizontally then it's the door so you see what I'm saying that's you create a taxonomy tree for this so let me put the example that I'm talking about here so you create a little dichotomous key so either on touching the wall or not touching the wall so touching the wall or not touching the wall so this one is the not in this case you have the chair 
right? You had a chair. So you now on the other branch, you say, okay, so if it's touching the wall, either it's a part of the wall, part of the wall, or not a part of the wall. If it's a part of the wall, there's two options. Either it opens vertically or it opens horizontally. If it opens vertically, it's the window. If it opens horizontally, it's the closet door. Now on this branch, which was not touching the wall, you have all the furniture in the room. So you're going to say, okay, so either this is something that you that you lay down on or it's some or it's something that you that you don't. So if it's something that you don't lay down on, you go this way. But if it's something you lay down on, it's a bed. So now you have the options for the beds. But there's two depth, two types of beds in the room, so you can split them more. So you say, if it's something that has two floors, you're going to go one way. But if it's something that goes the other floor, you, you one floor, you go the other way. So in other words, if there's two places to lay down on. So that means this is going to be the bunk bed, and this is going to be the bed that's la loft. All right? So I can keep going and classify all the objects of the room, but this is basically how it works. And this is what a dichotomous key is supposed to look like. Let's look at an example of one. Okay, so here you go. If the animal has, does the animal has feathers? If you answer no, you go to the right side. Does the animal have legs? If you answer no, you go to the, to the down again and you hit the snake. All right. Uh, so how would I classify a hand then? It would have feathers and it swims. But if it, it but but it doesn't swim. Sorry. But if it swim, it would be a duck. But if it had no feathers and it had legs, it would have been a lizard. So you see how you. You can use this code to actually end up classifying the, the, the animals that you have to classify. So here's an example, okay? So let, we have these different kinds of fishes here. You should pause it and try to do it before I actually do it to see if you can figure this out, okay? So you have examples of 10 types of Illinois fish. Can you identify them using this simple key? So let's do this. Number one, there's a whisker light barbels present on the head. All right. So if that's true, you go to go to go to go to two. So I'm going to say I'm classifying this fish over here. All right. I don't see any barbs on the head, so I'm not going to go to two. Instead, I'm going to see there are no whisker barbels on the head, so I'm going to go to three. So I skip two and go to three. The mouth face downwards. It has a so so if that's the case, you're a sucker and you should go to four. If the mouth is not facing downwards, then maybe then you should go to five and oh, I don't think that I don't I'm not sure but I don't see it enough here to say that the mouth is facing downwards so I'm gonna go to five okay now uh, is the body elongated more than twice as long as it's tall if so you go to six if the body is not elongated uh, then you have then you but it's slap slided then you're gonna go and you and you're gonna be a bluegill but I think this one is definitely twice as long as it is tall so I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna go to six now do the first five rays of the dorsal fin have spike-like. That's the dorsal fin up there. I don't see any spike-like things. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's not the Brooks Stickleback. And I'm going to go to seven because the five rays are not spike-like. All right, so I'm on seven now. Do I have two dorsal fins? If not, if I do, I go to, uh, I'm a darter and I go to eight. If not, I'm on, I'll go to nine. So I only see one dorsal fin uh, or do I see two? I only see one dorsal fin. So I'm going to go to nine. Now, is the caudal fin forked? If yet, if it is, then you are going to be, if it's fin forked, then and you're going to be a spot fin skinner. But if the counter fin is kind of round, then you're going to be the, the black spotted top minnon kind of thing. And so, and that's going to be it because that's the ones that we actually uh, identify. So let's look at this one here. Let's look at, uh, uh, at the, this one right there. Now, does it have whisker-like barbels in the head? Okay, it does. So it's got to be a codfish. So I'm going to go to two. Counter fin is fort or not? Or is the kind of fin is rounded? It's rounded, so I'm talking about a, 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 tap, a catapult matcon, Tom. You see what I'm talking about? You use the key to help you identify type of fish you're talking about. So if you do it this way, you should have a way to find out what all these fish are. And I actually have a list worksheet on my website that you can actually work on and try to find out the answers by the end. And I hope I did all the taxonomy right. But you know, if you didn't, then afterwards when you finish it, you see, oh, I must have done something wrong because I couldn't classify two of the fish. You look at them again and you re-examine and you do it, it and you correct the problem if you had it right because yet so the advantage of the taxonomy key is therefore is that you can if you know don't know what a certain animal is and you have a taxonomy key you can follow the taxonomy key and eventually reach the code now it comes up with something that we we call the phylo code or the path you're supposed to take at each branch of the tree so and that's actually how now we text we analyze or tech or, or classify animals not so much based on the taxonomy levels that Linnaeus used to use actually classify animals based on their phylo code. In other words, each dichotomous step listed over it all the way until you can find out who he is. For example, notice that uh, this animal here is the common assessor of them all, and uh, minor, if it has a mitochondria nucleus, then you're going to go to this branch. If not, you're going to go to the other branch, and you're a bacteria. If it has chloroplasts, you go this way, and you're a plant. But if not, you're going to go the other way, and you're going to be either a fungus or a metazoan. Uh, if 
you are an uh, uh, external heterotroph, you're not a fungus, so you're going to go on this way of the tree. Uh, if you have organs, then you're not going to go, gonna go to the sponge you know, if you have tissue. If you have nervous and vascular systems, then you're going to go this way instead of the other way. If you're a protozoan, you go that way. If you're a deuterozoan, you go the other way. So we're a deuterozoan, so we're going to go this way. Also vertebrates, we also have jaws, we also have digits, we have amniotic eggs, all right? We have hair, we have placenta, all right? Uh, and then you eventually find all the little things until you actually hit your specific uh, A. So this is how you do a phylocode, and you can use this to find the relationships between the animals the same way you would with a taxa. Because remember, if you share one of the branches with, the, with that animal, it means you're probably closer if you didn't, right? Now, that tells us that we can have different relationships with the tree of life. First of all, the idea of rooting. If you share a root with someone, that means you share a common ancestor with someone, right? That's a very important concept. The roots, or each of the splits, will tell you that it is a common ancestor taking place. Now, the rooting, the original branch of the tree, so the root would be right there. That's going to be the root of our tree. Now, a basal taxon is a taxon that uh, you share with. So, in other words, all the birds are going to be archaeosauromorphs because they are in the basal taxon of that branch right there. So the basal taxon for all of these is going to be archaeosauromorphs. All right. So you, do you understand what I'm saying? So if if you if you act, well, the basal taxon is the group of the tree that you belong to. In other words, major branch, and you can get more specific basal taxon. A, a sister taxa, someone who is in the same basal taxon as you are. So all the people who are who took this left turn here are sister taxas of the other ones because they're in the same major branch. Everybody who shares a basal taxon is going to be in the same uh, uh, sister taxa. Likewise, if you're looking at a, a different basal taxon, for example, if that's the basal taxon you're look, looking at, and only the birds and the theropods are going to be sister taxa. So it depends on how closer you want to look at the relationship. By the way, each time uh, there's a split in the tree of life, it's because something new happened, or a derived character, or our branching point, is because a new characteristic arise that caused a split in the tree of life. Some people had this characteristic, some didn't just like the dichotomous key we talked about so there's always should be a two-way split all along the way just like the dichotomous key that we talked about but sometimes you see these kinds of things so you see here there's a four-way split the reason they do that is because they're not sure yet how these different animals split from each other and how what in which order they split from each other and that's what we call something that's called a polytomy where in a taxonomic tree because the relationship between them is unclear we all put them together and this is basically saying this is as close as we can get for understanding how these animals Will split from each other. We know they have a common ancestor here. We don't know the order of how they split from each other. We need more evidence to actually explain this, which indicates that taxonomy trees are always works in progress and that new evidence actually can make them change. There's a lot of advantages of using this system. The major advantage is that it helps with establish a revolutionary history because you can see each split of the tree of life. At the same time, you can link the splits to the hierarchical to taxa that you learned before. Look here. There's the different species, the different genus, the different families, and the different orders orders all linked so you can still have the taxonomy in this all right also it considers the whole the idea of derived characters which are the branches of the tree of life every time you have a split it's because something new happened with life so for example the reason why the conidae are different from the felidae is it, there's a reason for that. That's why there's a derived character. So a derived character or a step in the dichotomous key determines whether I go this way or that way. Clearly the morphology is different, so you, you, you're going to separate them. They have different structures, right? Likewise, you have a derived character over here. One is going to be the wild wolf. The other one is going to be domesticated, so that itself is a derived character. You know, derived character is what causes a split in a taxonomic group of the tree of life. But there are some disadvantages advantage of using this system. There is no information on here about how fast evolution is taking place. I don't know how long it took for this branch to actually come from the derived character or from the astral basal taxon where it is now. You also have no information about how long that specific group has lived on the on the earth. In other words, how long ago did the Condus lupus evolve? So that's the problem of using the classical phylogeny. Also, it's very easy to confuse common origin and origin from each other. For example, a lot of people think we come from monkeys because we are sister taxa from each other. But that does not necessarily mean people get that confused. We're not 
exactly uh, uh, come from each other. In fact, we come from the same common ancestor. But people get that confused when you put in a tree of life, all right? And we're going to talk more about this in, in, the, in, the, in the later on the lecture series, but this is just a hypothesis for the evolutionary relationship. And like anything else, you have to gather data to substantiate this hypothesis. So all taxonomic trees are hypotheses, and now we're going to talk about in the lecture, lecture, lecture series about how you actually collect evidence to develop these trees and actually systematically organize them in a process that we call systematics. I'll see you guys then.